Hello, my name is John and today we're in the cockpit of the MiG-21 BIS again. In this video I want to show you how to navigate with the aircraft by using the RSBN system. For this tutorial I have set up a little flight and we will start right here on the left hand side, just above the ocean. And we will fly towards, um, Siena, um, towards the coast on a heading of approximately 45 degrees. And we will try to intercept radial 090 towards uh, Senaki Kolki. And then we will, once intercepted the radial, we will fly towards the station until we will overfly it. And once we have overflown it, we will turn a bit to the right and we will fly, fly away from the station on radial 280. And um, once about halfway towards Tipsil, we will switch over the frequency uh, towards the next RSBN station, uh, which will be Tipsil, and we will start to uh, perform an approach using the RSBN approach mode. And once we get about um, 20 kilometers away from the airport, we will start to do an approach or towards the runway uh, using the PRMG. Okay. Uh, first things first, uh, let's have a look down at the control panel. It's down here towards the left, just behind the throttle. And uh, I will move the throttle a bit so you can see it. Uh, it doesn't really matter, we are on pause right now, so... Just put it there. And um, this black panel here is the control panel. On the left hand side you can set the presets for the RSBN. And on the right hand side you can set the presets for the PRMG. Uh, the RSBN is basically a VOR DME system, while the PRMG is more or less the Western ILS system. Both the, PR, uh, the PRMG and the RSBN operate quite similar to or similar to the Western com counterparts. And um, down here we have one important switch. We, han we have to keep this switch in the up position for using the PR. MG and the RSBN and uh, we have it in the downward position if you want to use the automatic direction finder or, or the AR car ARK as it's called and um, basically we have this switch in the up position this basically allows us that this needle here is pointing towards the RSBN station and not towards the AR car station or ADF station or however you want to call it and um, that's about all we need to do down here and now the only thing we want to do, uh, we want to set the station or the station preset, which for our first waypoint Senaki is preset 14. And we basically just have to set it for the RSBN, because we don't plan to land on to or land at Senaki, so we don't have to set it for the landing PRMG mode. And as you can already hear, there are two lights illuminating and there is a sound beeping. And this basically means if the lights are illuminating, the code or the, the frequency received is valid and um, you can basically safely use um, the station for navigation. And um, the beep might be annoying, so we can turn down the volume a bit by using this volume adjust here. And the remaining switches on this panel are not really uh, any useful to us, they are more or less maintenance options. The only thing we could use this button over here would be the RSBN self-test, but uh, I guess you can figure out that yourself. Okay, now let's have a look on the controls we have on the panel on the front here. Uh, one of the most important controls overall for the RSBN and PRMG system is this little switch here. And as you can see, when I switch it, it will just immediately start uh, changing its that um, yeah, changing the instruments and flags appearing, stuff like that. And um, reason for this is this is the sel mode selector switch. In the top mode, you are in the descent mode, which we will cover later in this video. In the middle position, we are in the normal navigation mode, which we will talk about in a second. And in the lower position, we are in the PRMG landing mode, which we will cover at the very end of the video. But um, basically, uh, if you want to navigate and you don't plan to do a descent to an airport or anything like that, you want to have it in the middle position. Um, um, indicator, a very important indicator, is over here. This is the distance indicator and it shows the distance towards the station in kilometers. Uh, the maximum distance you can receive a station is about 200 kilometers, so it won't show any more than that, usually. 
Okay, and over here we have uh, obviously the artifact summarized and the HSI or the NPP and KPP as they called. And basically, on the lower one here, you have most of the important information you need for operating the RSPN system or flying using the RSPN system. First things first, um, we have this needle here, which when the RSPN system is selected, shows toward uh, shows towards the RSPN station. So basically, this needle shows towards about uh, 75 degrees, meaning that the RSPN station is at a heading of 75 degrees. And if we want to go there directly, uh, we would just turn right and fly 75 degrees, and we would at one point arrive at the station. But um, for this video, we want to fly uh, the radial 070, or sorry, 090, as said previously. And for doing this, we will turn this switch over here, and we will, uh, or this knob over here, and we will select uh, with this needle head, we will select 090 degrees, which is the radial we intend to fly. And um, now we have a couple of indications as well in the middle here. Uh, the mi this needle to the left here basically shows us um, if we are need to fly further to the left or further to the right and you can see this needle already changing when we adjust the heading when we say I want to have fly heading 070 or 075 towards the station it's directly in the middle so basically you want to keep the mi needle centered and then you will fly the radial and um, another this needle is also repeated up here and um, Basically, uh, we will leave it on 090. And basically, if you have the needle centered, and it will stay centered uh, for half a minute, this means you're on the right radial and you're flying directly towards the station. And here on the artifactual horizon, we have another important indicator, which is this yellow needle here, which basically is a command line instrument. It indicates uh, what we need to do to fly towards that. If you, for example, if I turn this back again to uh, 070, so we would be in the middle here, but however we would fly off to the left, so this instrument is indicating we have to fly to the right or we have to bank to the right to stay on the radial. And basically you can use this instrument to just follow. If you set the radial down here, you just use this instrument and if you keep it centered, you will end up on the radial and we will you will be following it just fine. And this is what we will do in the video right now, or the, this part of the flight. Just follow this needle to center the radial. And to do that, I will unpause the simulation. Uh, f first, increase the throttle again. And then unpause the simulation. Okay, there we go. And um, now let me just accelerate a bit, a bit on the low side here. Then we'll pull it out of the afterburner and get again. And um, uh, right now you can see the needle is a bit to the right, so I'll disconnect uh, the recovery mode and just bank a bit to the right to get the needle centered. And we'll just just follow just follow the needle and um, get onto the radial just nicely. You can see the needle is keeping indicating or keep telling us a, a bank to the right, which means that we have just gradually to turn to the right to smoothly intercept the radial. Obviously you wouldn't need the yellow needle, you could just do it by the lower needles, but uh, it's much easier this way and basically takes off a lot of workload from the pilot, which is in this aircraft being quite old and not very automated, uh, quite a good thing to have. And now you can see it basically sent us off to a curse which is about 30 degrees to the left or uh, yeah away from the curse we want to intercept. Zero, see we are flying curse 060 basically and um, we need to fly and we we are getting closer therefore. So um, this is also a common procedure if you fly normally or manually sorry. Um, if you fly manually, um, that you intercept the radial at the curse of deviation of about 30 degrees to the left or to the right. And th this is the same thing uh, the system here does. And basically, we'll just keep flying this curse, I guess, uh, until the needle starts to move again, and then we will start to intercept the radial. And until then, I will time forward a bit to keep you not too bored and to keep the uh, videos in somewhat reasonable length. So see you once we're closer to there.
and as you can now start to see the needle on the bottom on the NPP is starting to get closer towards the middle and um, the needle on the KPP on the artificial horizon is centered more or less and basically indicates as we are now slowly but surely intercepting the radial we choose and in a couple of seconds probably we will get the indication to turn a bit further to the right uh, which we are actually doing right now as well uh, so that we are just flying on the heading we desire and um, therefore we will then fly towards the station on the radial we selected you can see the needle in the middle is creeping slowly but surely um, to the left um, each point on there has a certain degree deviation and there I think it might be 2 degrees, at least it's 2 degrees in normal western devices but, uh, or 5 degrees depending on which device you use but uh, I'm not sure how this deviation indication is here but it would be a couple of degrees at most so just wait until we get to there we have the needle centered and then we will basically be able to engage the recovery mode and just cruise there smoothly and um, then we will have a look once we overfly the station we will adjust our radial we want to fly and um, yeah now let's just wait for the wait for the needle get centered I mean obviously um, the, the KPP uh, gives us quite smooth directions here uh, you obviously could fly uh, this whole thing much more aggressively and just fly the needle, the lower needle uh, on the NPP centered immediately and uh, or getting very close to it centered which would be depending on the situation maybe a better or maybe a worse uh, decision to do but uh, given the age of the aircraft and that we are flying in quite smooth weather without any actual ATC, we just fly the gradual approach but uh, it's uh, in such situations it's more or less up to pilot's, pilot's decision what he prefers and as you can see now the needle is touching the low needle on the NPP the localizer needle as I just will call it uh, is about to touch, uh, touch the ball in the middle which means we are more or less flying towards it it's uh, on the dedicated radial and as you can see our heading is 09 degrees or maybe a bit less 080 degrees or 085 degrees something like that and um, our radial therefore is about to align with our uh, current course which means we are doing good progress towards the station on the radial we were supposed to fly and as you can see uh, the needle is about at center now I mean uh, having a manual system like this you never really get that accurate if you don't spend all the time on doing it uh, but it's definitely a nice exercise nonetheless um, the MiG-21 also features an uh, option to have the basically the autopilot fly the PRMG approach however I don't think it actually can just intercept the radial uh, it can overdo uh, the approach which is a bit weird but I guess up to the design back then and now you can see we are pro pretty much dead on on the radial just engage the recovery mode and fly the radial towards the station if you have a quick look to the right hand side you can see the distance to the station is counting down gradually and uh, once that reads zero we will be over the station and we will do some course corrections there and now we're getting up to the station the distance is almost counting zero or indicating zero so we'll just overfly the station in a second and you'll see the needle with the round head will surf around and you can see the distance scale is wandering off and uh, our the localizer scale is wandering off which is not a problem because that's what we want to do but the thing is we will now adjust our curse 
our our localizer we want to fly on I'll just set it here to um, 100 degrees or uh, on the back side we will fly a way on radial we will fly a way on radial 280 which is uh, heading 100 so therefore we will just disengage the autopilot and fly a bit to the right and as you can see the the yellow needle indicating what we need to do is not correct anymore at this point and uh, what we can do here though to actually still get the, um, the accurate readout and the, basically the suggestion we can turn this needle, uh, needle the NPP curve set, we can turn it around and uh, put it on 280 degrees and now uh, although we are flying away this needle is actually indicating the correct it's indicating the correct um, yeah, basically the correct procedure is for us to follow so uh, when you fly away from the station have the needle point towards the station still or select the reverse curves basically and um, still get the correct correct indication on the command device or KPP and as you can see it's we're about to intercept um, the radial again and uh, be aware the device is quite it's quite uh, sensitive so close to the station uh, obviously, if you have, if you imagine the station on the ground, there are go there are 360 lines going out. The closer you are, the closer together those lines or those radials will be. So expect the expect the instrument to be more sensitive close to the station. Okay, and uh, you can you can see we're getting about getting about centered right there again. And we we'll just want to level out a bit and just wait a few seconds before engaging the autopilot. And basically, we now fly away from the station. And we obviously, if the stations are further apart than they are on this flight, we would have to stay on this frequency for a bit, so that we actually, until we get actually into the range of the next station. But um, here, um, the next frequency should be already within range. So we'll go ahead and tune uh, the station of Tipsil, or how that's pronounced now. And uh, down here, we'll just dial in 122 two and see if we can get it. Oh, see, we, we actually don't get it yet. So uh, let's go back to 14, which is the station of Senaki. And we'll just follow that for a couple of more kilometers, maybe 70 kilometers out. We will try again to switch over to um, the station, uh, to the next station. And uh, we will still be quite on a right curse though because just we will follow the we follow the, the curse away from the station we have measured out of the map and uh, another thing which you might have noticed uh, the center tank I'm carrying got empty and we will drop the center tank by pressing down the pinky switch down here um, you it's recommended to map that probably on your pinky switch and this switch is to drop the sank uh, center tank if you want to drop the wing tanks uh, this will be under this switch and now I'll just time forward again uh, until we are about 70 kilometers f or at about 70 kilometers away from the station and then we will try it one more time to actually receive the next station. See you there. Okay, now we are not that far away. We are not 70 kilometers away yet from the previous station, but um, I guess we will give it another spin right here. I will just set um, the curves to one or the frequency to one two. The preset one two, which is tipsil. Just wait for the instrument to get it, its bearings, and you can see now the curse needle is slowly swinging forward, and um, the distance indicator is indicating 180 kilometers right now. So um, as you could see, um, 20 kilometers further away, and we were outside of the maximum range of 200 kilometers. That's why we couldn't receive anything back over the station. And now obviously our needle, our curse needle is pointing to the wrong direction. We want to fly towards the station. There we will just swing the curse set around. And as you can see, um, the needle, the station is pretty much straight ahead of us. So we just put our curse needle also just above the needle and we will fly the right radial towards the station. We just correct for that a small bit. It shouldn't be a big problem. And just let me set the curse one more time to the left a bit. You can see we can now smoothly intercept the new curse and just fly towards the station for a few more seconds. But um, 
and we want, um, I was descending throughout the flight, we want to be at approximately um, 10,000 feet for our RSPN cloud penetration mode to work properly or to be engaged at the right time. And the uh, RSPN cloud proper um, penetration mode is basically a mode which allows you to descend safely through clouds and not crash into any cumulus granitus on the way in between. And also is useful at night when you maybe not see a mountain if you're on quite some remote areas where it's quite dark. So therefore we will uh, try to use this mode in a couple of seconds. Just Let's just fly the radial towards the station right here. And uh, this will pretty much do it. I just need to put a bit more to the left. This is a bit of adjusting, adjusting work. Um, and this aircraft is quite old, but I guarantee you it's still as clumsy to do uh, today as it was back then. And you might have seen this. Um, my pilot is getting a bit dark and uh, this is probably a sign for hypoxia or the fuel is getting a bit blurry. This is a sign for hypoxia, which is a current bug at the moment. It will hopefully be fixed soon and I will just quickly respawn with a new aircraft and we will continue. And here we are on our way again. We are now back at about 160 kilometers out from our destination. And um, we now will prepare for the uh, cloud penetration mode as mentioned previously. And basically it has a couple of um, limits you need to meet or you want to meet. And basically uh, you want to be more than 120 kilometers out and you be at an altitude of about uh, 10,000 or more or less 10,000 meters. And what the cloud penetration mode will do, it will, uh, will give you a descent pass you can follow, which will safely bring you to the airport of your destination. And um, it keeps you clear of all the mountains. And um, the only thing we need to actually switch to get into the cloud penetration mode is we need to flick this switch into the upwards position, which we will do. Oh, sorry, that was the downwards, that's the upward position. As you can now see, we have a horizontal indication here on yellow. And uh, this indication here uh, changed, uh, this indication here changed as well. And now we will follow this yellow indication which basically gives us the descent angle we need to do and as you can see at this altitude it's it says that we need to be more or less level but um, the sooner we get to the 120 kilometers which are the starting point um, or once we get there we'll start to dedicate a, or indicate a, a descent or to command a descent to better put it and um, while we wait to get there we can actually do uh, one more preparation for our landing then we will can set the PRMG frequency, which in here in the simulation is always the same preset as the RSBN frequency. And basically, setting the PRMG frequency allows us to quickly change into the PRMG mode just by switching down into the PRMG mode selection. And um, that's actually all we need to do. We just need to get 10 kilometers closer and then we are at about our, our descent point. We will start to follow this needle to descend safely towards the airport. And you can see now the needle points quite properly downwards. And we will just um, disconnect the autopilot and see what happens if we start to follow this indication. But you can see on the left hand side this needle is moving down. And if you're familiar with the ILS indications in Western aircraft, uh, this indicates probably that we are just below the glide pass right now. Once we push our nose over, yeah, we, as you can see the na needle is coming up and uh, it will start to give us glide pass indication. And there we are, just um, the recommended speed. Recommended speed is about 600 kilometers, so we will start to throttle back a bit. Uh, you can fly this at any speed actually. The system is correcting for uh, any speed deviation. But um, 600 kilometers is just um, the recommended speed. And uh, as you can see in the bottom in the NPP, uh, the needles there are now indicating the same as on the repeater device. And we're a bit to the left, but we should get there. And basically, I think the vertical needle should... Um, it was moving before, I'm not sure if it's indicating anything in this situation, unfortunately. I'm sorry for that, but I don't actually think so. Um, anyway, as you can see, we, we can 
follow the command we get from the horizontal yellow bar and we are descending with about 20 meters per second right now a bit more and uh, we're a bit on the fast side not too fast though it's well within uh, reasonable limits and just descend and uh, the cloud penetration mode will descend you to an altitude of 600 meters once there it will indicate the level flight again so uh, basically keep that in mind and uh, this was basically designed to obviously get below clouds and get into an altitude where you can either switch over to PRMG or um, follow or follow a visual approach perform uh, procedures or something like this and um, I will just I will just keep descending but I will skip through that or will fast forward through that because it's not much of actual work to do and I will see you once we get closer to that uh, 600 meters which will be about 20 kilometers away from the airport so it will take a couple of minutes and uh, see you there And as you can now see on the distance indicator, we are about 40 kilometers out. I will just follow this 10 more kilometers, and uh, although we are not at the minimum range there, uh, we will um, then start to break off to the left. We will not fly directly to the airport anymore, and we will go ahead and fly to the left so we can fly, uh, land towards uh, runway, which is about heading 150 if I remember correctly. So we will fly towards the left in a bit, just to get, a, get us to the left of the airport so we can fly ourselves uh, long or a uh, quite decent long approach and the airport itself is just up ahead not turning a bit to the right but um yeah and the cloud penetration mode as you see here it's there's terrain here but we're safely above that well above minimum distance or any safe safety concerns and um, this is what this mode is very useful for just to not get too close to any terrain, especially if you don't can or if you can't see it. And anyway, we are about 30 kilometers now, so we'll just start to turn to the left, and we'll just keep. We will stay in the cloud penetration mode for a bit, and just keep descending downwards or more downwards. And as you can see, we are not flying towards the station anymore directly, so it will um, command us a bit of a lower descent, which obviously is because we're not closing in to the station as fast anymore. Just add a bit of throttle for quenching the descent, and we are will be about 600 meters above the airfield in a couple of seconds, and uh, 20 kilometers out, as the system is indicating. And yeah, now we are arriving here over the delta here. Just have to be careful in a bit with the hills in front of us. Obviously, once you deviate from the course, you cannot guarantee anymore that. Um, you actually will safely or be away from the terrain but um, we have to do this uh, course correction here to the left to actually get us aligned with the PRMG and now at 20 kilometers we will switch this switch to the lower position here and hopefully get the PRMG landing indication any second now um, and um, the, P uh, the ILS in an American aircraft has to be tuned manually or uh, set the curves for manually but here in this aircraft you have just to be within 45 degrees uh, horizontally of the runway uh, approach end and it will actually um, then automatically 
detect from which end you're approaching and automatically will find the curse you have to set. And the airport is over there. So um, we are, as you can see, and now we got the indication we intercepted quite, or yeah, we intercepted that radial or approach curse quite steeply. So obviously we overshot, uh, which was a bit of a problem from my side. But um, as you can see, the red flags are on, the red and yeah, the red flags, uh, which are labeled T and key. Not sure how it's pronounced in Russian, sorry. But um, these indicate that there is no signal right now, and once we get back within the uh, 45 degree range, uh, they will come back and indicate that there is signal. Hopefully. And yeah, there you can see. You can see. It now indicates that we are to the. We are currently a bit to the. or we have to fly a bit to the right, and we are just below glide pass. So at this point, we will reduce throttle. 10 kilometers out, as you can see on the distance indicator, we will drop the gear, which will slow us down quite nicely. As you can see, we are right just ahead of the runway, as you can see down here on this instrument, which I just will use for the approach now. You can see that. Just keep the altitude a bit, not descend too much there. I'll set the first pair of flaps, which gives us a bit of a decrease as well in speed. I just follow these two indications on the instrument. Um, and um, once once we get close enough, yeah, um, sorry a bit funky, I'm following it. Once we are within f three kilometers or so, I will start to look out to actually simulate for the wind, or uh, not the not the wind, but recovering or returning visibility. Just have overshot there a bit. It's it's quite tricky to follow the raw data data, and I wouldn't have to do so. And uh, sorry, I was not too concentrated on there bit on the high end, but we can fetch that in, can we? Hopefully. Just come on a quick descent and there we go, we are well within approach parameters right now. Poppy tells us a bit too high, but we will get there. And um, this is not one of my best approaches, so I'm, sorry, but, uh, I'm very sorry for but I hope it will do for this tutorial. And there we are on the runway, just extend the parachute. Reactivate the parachute, have a look in the mirror, the parachute is extended. And um, basically this was more or less a bit of a not too good approach, but uh, I guess with some training you can definitely make that or do that better than I can. And one last recommendation, if you're far enough out and you have enough time, which wasn't really the case here, you can use one of these two switches here on the cell panel. If you use the left one, uh, which you can't do anymore because you're on the ground and too slow, um, but the left one basically will um, give you command bar indications uh, here again for the approach mode. So um, if you use those you can get a vertical and a horizontal needle here and uh, they will do the same as they did with the normal RSP and navigation modes just for the landing so you can follow them uh, like a flight director or command bar or how you want to call it. And if you activate the automatic position down here in the middle button here um, you actually have the aircraft fly the approach. It will follow these two vertical and horizontal needles and um, it will actually fly the approach for you. This is not intent to land the aircraft for you. It's not the extending any flaps, not extending the gear, it will not flare, but it, it is there to actually descend the aircraft towards the runway, which can be quite a relief uh, for the pilot at some times. And uh, I maybe do a video on that as well, how to do an uh, automatic or half automatic approach there and I also will do a video uh, sometime how to operate the ARK ADF navigation system and um, I hope you liked this video thank you very much for watching and have a great day